please yes i did yeah uh, any problem in that sir i want to know the answers you want to know the answers okay fine so in the first question you just have to make an alkene like this right yes sir now in the second question hbr now as you can see it is symmetrical alkene so the br can attach on the first or second any of the carbon atoms right yes sir and the double bond will be not there then for this you will be making vicinal dibromide br here and br here right yes what about the fourth one uh where should i put the br first or carbon or second carbon where did you put it first I carbon right nahi Huh? Sir, I did on the second one. No, no, no. Ah, uh, see, we have written here, which will be major. The carbon which is having less number of hydrogens, right? Yes or no? Yes, sir. There is no peroxide. But if I look at the fifth one, then it will attach on the second carbon. In the presence of peroxide. now here it will attach in, in the presence of peroxide it will attach on the second carbon why because that is less substituted and it has more number of hydrogen atoms br and here it will be ch3 right or you did uh, where did you put the oh, sorry yes. it is pl ha huh? not br but rather cl yeah i did the solution You did this one, okay. What about the seventh one? So in the seventh one, you will put the Br in the first carbon because it has more number of it has less number of hydrogens, right? Yeah. And there is no peroxide. Now when you have peroxide, then you will put it on the carbon which has more number of hydrogens. So there will be. A single bond here, like this. Where did you attach the BR? So on the other carbon. So, so how were you working with this? I don't understand this. So we had uh, two cases, right? We had two cases. One is. Oh, no, no, sorry, I, I I did this one wrong. Sorry, this will be in the first carbon because HCl and peroxide they don't have any issue. Okay, see, there are two cases, you know. There are two cases. The first case, only HBr. If only HBr, then HBr attaches on which carbon? First or second? Look in your notes. We have the same example here. Only if if HBr is present or HCl is present, only the halogen, only the halogen hydride, no peroxide. Then the halogen it attaches on which carbon? First carbon or second carbon? So now I look at your notes and tell me. Let me write H X only. First one. First carbon, right? So with the with the carbon which has less number of hydrogen or more number of hydrogen. Less. Less number of hydrogen. So that is something that we have to see. This will be C S three and this will be X. Now if I have. So which carbon will have more number of hydrogen? One or two? Tell me. One. One has how many hydrogens? One has how many hydrogens? One has how many hydrogens? Two. 
one. Okay, and two has how many hydrogens? Two has how many hydrogens? None. None. So which has less, one or two? Two. So the X will attach on second carbon. Anna? Yes, sir. Okay. We will get to the reason. We'll get to the reason. The same molecule here. But we have here HBr in the presence of peroxide. Now, in this case, the Br will attach on the carbon with one number of hydrogens, that is the first carbon, which has one hydrogen. But if I have HCl and peroxide, then there will be no changes, like peroxide does not affect the addition of HCl, we will be putting it on the, we will be putting it on the carbon with less number of hydrogens. Okay, so peroxide only has effect if you are putting it with HBr, otherwise it does not have any effect. So let us look at the mechanisms today, huh? and then we will understand it better. So without peroxide, first of all, we are looking at without peroxide. So without peroxide, we have CS3, single bond CH, double bond CH2. Then we have HBr. I'm thinking the example of HBr. We can have HX anything. HX here. We can have HX here. Now, in the HX, hydrogen is delta positive because it's less electronegative. X is delta negative because it is more electronegative. And then we have electron density in the pi bond. So electron is more in the pi bond. So it will act as an electron source and it will give its electron to the hydrogen. And hydrogen, since it, it cannot make two bonds, it will break the bond with halogen. And it will give the electrons of the bond to the halogen. Now here we can have two, here we have two different possibilities. Like the hydrogen, no? it is attacked by the pi bond. Now pi bond is shared between these two carbon atoms, but only one of them can, only one of them will be able to get the hydrogen. So let us look at these two possibilities, which of the carbon is going to get the hydrogen. So let us say that this is the first carbon and this is the second carbon. So if we are looking at the first carbon and if the first carbon is getting the hydrogen, then we'll have CH2 and then CH2 and there will be a positive charge because this carbon initially had a pi bond but does not have any pi bond now. Initially it had four bonds, now it just has three bond. that is why it is getting a positive charge. Now if it attaches on the second carbon atom, then we will get CH3, CH, sigma bond, CH3 and there will be a positive charge in the second carbon atom. Now we have to look and compare which of these, the first product or the second product is more stable, which car carbocation is more stable. So you can see that it is one degree carbocation primary, it's just two degree carbocation. Now, whenever we talk about carbocation, we will talk about hyperconjugation. So I hope you can see that this is sp2. This is also sp2. And the number of alpha hydrogen here, it is equal to, this is alpha carbon, only two alpha hydrogens are there. Now in this structure, we have how many alpha hydrogen? We have six alpha hydrogens. So which will be more stable, one or two, Samaira? Okay, Sara and Aisha are also here. Yeah, tell me which will be more stable, guys. One or two? Two. Two will be more stable. Yeah, right. Aisha, Sara, Samar, all of you agree? Yes, sir. Oh, I can't hear others. Yes. Yeah. Two will be more stable, right? Now, since two is more stable, we will get more and more. We will uh, this will be formed in a minor amount. This will be formed in a major amount. And whatever X negative we have left from the first reaction, S ne X negative, that will attack on the carbocation CH. And hence, you are going to get CH3, CH, 
CH3, and there will be X atom attached on that carbon atom, which is having less number of hydrogen. Now, this is also give, this was given by Marco Nico, and he said and he pointed this out as a rule. So you may get in examination what is the Marco Nikov rule directly. Marco Nikov's rule. So Marco Nikov rules is uh, rule is applicable whenever you are adding on alkene. So the alkene should be unsymmetrical. It means uh, the number of carbon atoms on either side of the double bond they should be different. Right? The number of carbon atoms on the either side should be different because it doesn't make sense if I want to give the product in this carbon atom, in this alkene. Whether I put the halogen here or here, it doesn't make any difference. Both of the uh, both of the product will be same product. So when you have unsymmetrical alkene and the reagent, it should be also unsymmetrical. It means that there should be a delta positive part on the delta negative part. It should be having a positive and negative part. So Marconikov's rule it states that when an unsymmetrical alkene, when an unsymmetrical alkene, unsymmetrical alkene is treated with unsymmetrical reagent unsymmetrical reagent will be two different atoms okay two different atom or two different groups of atom which has a specific positive and specific negative parts okay specific positive and negative part when an unsymmetrical alkene is treated with unsymmetrical reagent then the negative part of the reagent then the negative part of the reagent attaches on that carbon atom which has less number of which has less number of hydrogen which has less number of hydrogen so this is the marconi cost rule this is clear now samaira sara and aisha yes sir yes na why we are getting the product in which we have less number of carbon next is the uh, peroxide uh, next is the peroxide effect or peroxide mechanism the peroxide mechanism Peroxide mechanism. Okay. Now in peroxide mechanism, I will start with an example which is CS3. Just simply bonded to CH, doubly bonded to CH2. We react this with HBr in the presence of peroxide. A peroxide is, uh, I hope you have heard of hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. Peroxide, that means for each oxygen, there will be one hydrogen. For each oxygen, there will be one hydrogen. Now, in peroxide mechanism, we usually use a organic peroxide. That means instead of hydrogen, you will have an R group, alkyl group, or aryl group, R, which is bonded to O, which is further bonded to O, and then it is bonded to R group here. Now, in the first step, of this process, we have the peroxide that is R. We have the R <coughs> OOR, which dissociates into two free radicals. So you get two RO free radical, two RO free radical. Then this two RO, RO free radical. It reacts with HBr. Now we know that we have your delta positive, and here we have delta negative. So this oxygen atom it has lone pairs also. So what does it do? It starts reacting with the hydrogen. It starts giving the electron stick to hydrogen. So it reacts like this. Now hydrogen gives breaks the bond, and it gives one of the electrons to RO. So you are going to make R, and OH bond is formed. So you get an alcohol from the peroxide. Plus we get a Br free radical. Plus we get a Br free radical. Now, 
the next step that I'm going to show you, it doesn't really happen like this, but you have to imagine CH double bond CH2. And then we have, okay, so this pi bond breaks and you get CH3. CH single bond CH2. Okay, so free radical and free radical. Now this happens so rapidly that this step and the next step that I'm going to write, now you have CS3, CH single bond, CH2, and both of them have free radical, plus we have a BR free radical, right? Plus we have a BR free radical. Now, here also we are going to get two different product. We have got an option. Please don't write now, okay? If you're writing, please don't write now. Just listen right now. You will get the PDF now, so you can make the notes. Now, this BR can be attached on the first carbon or the second carbon also, right? First carbon or the second carbon also. Here we have CS3. Let us see if we have the first carbon or the second carbon. This is the first and this is the second. So let us say that the BR is going to attach on the first carbon atom. You will have CH. There will be BR and you will get a CH2 free radical. Now, in the second case, if I have CS3, single bond CH, free radical, and there will be CH2, BR, right? First carbon and second carbon. Any problem till here, guys? No, sir. No, no. Now here also we have seen, we have got two free radicals and we have to talk about the stability of free radical, which will be more stable. That will be formed more in the major product, CH2, free radical. So this is also what? One degree. This is two degree. Now again, this is SP2. This is SP2. Now here the number of alpha hydrogen, it will be only equal to one. And here the number of alpha hydrogen will be equal to three plus two, five. Right? So there are five alpha hydrogens there and one here. So obviously the second is going to be major product. Right, second is going to be major product. Now, this major product that is CS3, CH3 radical, CH2Br, it reacts with HBr that is present in the solution and it forms a bond with the hydrogen like this and you get CS3, CH2, CH2, Br, plus BR free radical from here, right? BR free radical from here. So you can see when you have peroxide, then the major product is going to be that carbon atom. The bromine is going to attach on that carbon atom, which is having more number of hydrogen, which is having more number of hydrogen. And this is known as the anti-Markovnikov rule. It is also known as the peroxide effect and the Farage effect. So there are a few names. Anti-Markovnikov. Okay. Now, in this case, when you have one unsymmetrical alkene, an unsymmetrical alkene is treated with unsymmetrical alkene is treated with HBr in the presence of. in the presence of peroxide then the negative part is attached on that carbon which has more number of hydrogen Is this clear, guys? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. The next reaction. So we have done questions on this now. So we are going to look at the next reaction that is addition of water hydrolysis. Addition of water. Hello. 
addition of water. So in addition of water, we will have alkene and we will add water to it. Alkene and we will add water to it. So you have this is going to form alcohols. You know, it will form alcohols and is and water is added in the presence of F plus that is acid. Generally, usually it is usually few drops of H2SO4. So here we have carbon doubly bonded with another carbon. There are another groups attached and we have to react hydrogen and OH. This is water, right? Yes or no? This is water. Hmm? Yes. This Ah, this is water. So I hope you all, you all of you can see there is a delta positive part and there is a delta negative part. Correct? Yes or no? So this is also an unsymmetrical, unsymmetric reagent, right? Right, guys? Unsymmetrical, na? delta positive and delta negative. So you will attach hydrogen in one of that and you will attach OH in the other one. So if you have something like this, CH2, doubly bonded with CH2, then it is going to be of no problem because you will have CH3, CH2, OH. So whether the OH attaches on the first carbon or the second carbon of the double bond, it doesn't matter. In both of the cases, you are going to get ethanol. You are going to get ethanol. But if you have three carbons, that is CH3, CH double bond CH2, then in this case, when you are adding water to it in the presence of acid, then you have to look at first carbon and second carbon. So it is going to follow the Markovnikov's rule and it will attach on that carbon, which is having less number of hydrogen. OH will attach the negative part. Now this is negative part. It's going to attach on that carbon atom, which has less number of hydrogen. So CH, CH3, and you will have OH here. Is it clear? Yes or no? Please tell me. Yes, sir. Okay. Now I'm asking you a few questions. So tell me in the first carbon or the second carbon, where will the water attach? Sorry, OH attach? Or any of them? Tell me. You have to count the hydrogen number of hydrogens. How many hydrogens in the first carbon? How many hydrogens in the first carbon? Are One. One. One carbon. Okay. And in the second one, how many? One. One. So OH will attach on any, na? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's not going to make any difference. It's going to attach on any of the carbons. Okay, what about here? First carbon or second carbon? Second. How many hydrogens? Achha, ye batai na, ye batai the OH is going to attach on the hydrogen which uh, on that carbon which has more hydrogen or less hydrogen? Less. Less hydrogen. Okay. How many hydrogens are there in the first carbon? How many hydrogens are there in the first carbon? None. And in the second carbon? One. And what did you what did, what was the answer that you gave? Second carbon, no? Huh? Yes. Why? It will attach on the first carbon, right? Yes. Don't be, don't be in a hurry, you know? 
look at this question and tell me the OH will attach on which carbon first or second? Second. Second card. Okay. <clears throat> Next is oxidation of alkenes. Oxidation of alkenes. Okay. So we have oxidation by, with uh, oxidizing agents such as KMnO4, but there are two different ways in which we can do the oxidation. We can either do this oxidation in cold condition, that is cold and dilute KMnO4, cold and dilute KMnO4 in aqueous conditions. This is also known as the Bayer's reagent. Is also known as the Bayer's reagent. Okay, so this leads to formation of leads to formation of glycols. That is diols. Right? That means when you have C double bond C with different groups attached to it, and you we add this with KMnO4. In aqueous conditions, so you are going to get OH. OH. Easy, yes or no? Please tell me. Instead of the double bond, you will break the double bond and you will form two different, you will form two different OH groups. You can also be given this reaction in. You add water in the presence of KMnO4. This is the same reaction. They can also give you temperatures such as 0 degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin. That means cold. That means cold. Now, KMnO4 in water, that is KMnO4 in aqueous condition. That is why you are going to get glycol again. So, glycols are molecule which have OH group attached on OH group attached on adjacent carbon. Is this clear? Yes or no? Please tell me. Yes, guys. Yes, sir. Then you are going to form glycols, that is, OH will attach on adjacent carbons. Second is more important, that is, if you react alkenes with hot acidic KMnO4. Hot acidic KMnO4. Now, in hot acidic KMnO4, it leads to formation of of ketones or carboxylic acid or CO2 carbon dioxide depending on depending on the alkene depending on the alkene okay now Whenever you have an alkene, please listen, please listen very carefully. You have alkenes such as CH3, CH, double bond, CH2. Another type of alkene that you can have is carbon, which is bonded to CH3. This is also bonded to CH3, double bond, CH2. Okay. Now let us look at these carbon. Let us look at these alkenes so we can have only three different types of 
carbon in an alkene three different types of carbon so if i look at the first one that is the blue one you know this carbon atom it has a double bond and it has a it has two different sing single bonds one of the bonds is with hydrogen and the other bond is with ch3 is that correct yes or no can you see that can all of you see that yes or no please tell me yes sir okay now second that is the yellow one you tell me this carbon atom it is attached with what groups yellow one after double bond the single bond is with hydrogen hydrogen no both are hydrogen right third look at that carbon atom that is in pinkish type of color so c double bond c now tell me it is attached with cs3 right carbon. Uh, carbon so i can write instead of cs3 i can write an alkyl group general generally speaking so there are these are the three types of alkenes that you can these these are the three types of carbon atoms that you can see in doubly bonded alkene and a doubly bonded carbon atom which are which are alkene now when you react this with kmno4 the one which has one hydrogen if it has one hydrogen then it is going to form carboxylic acid that c double bond o this r will be as it is and the h will become oh so you have got carboxylic acid secondly if you have two hydrogens if you have two hydrogens then this is going to form co2 carbon dioxide and if you have zero hydrogens then you are going to form a ketone okay so i want all of you to write this part from here to here because we will do some questions now okay write this down three things one hydrogen two hydrogen zero hydrogen so one hydrogen carboxylic acid two hydrogens carbon dioxide zero hydrogens ketone let me know if you're done okay
One, you have to identify the two carbon atoms. Right? So the reagent is going to be KMnO4. H plus because acidic and there will be some heat given or high temperature will be given to you guys. Okay? So we have two different carbon atoms, the first carbon atom and the second carbon atom. So the first carbon atom has how many hydrogens? Has how many hydrogens? The first one? One. One. So it will convert into. It will convert into what? Carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid. So it will convert. You will break this bond like this, and you will write CS three. Carbon. This had a double bond, oxygen, and also a OH. Now what about the second carbon? It has how many hydrogens? Second carbon has two hydrogens, right? So it will convert into carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. Okay. This is how you are going to form the product. Second, if you have CS3, single bond CH, double bond CH, single bond CS3. Here you have the same reagent, KMnO4 in acid with some heat. So you tell me now, first and second carbon atom. Same, no? Both have one hydrogen, right? Yes. Yes. So both will convert into? Carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid. And both have same number of carbon atoms. So first of all, you will make like this, CS3, C double bond O. OH and just add two here because there will be two moles of carboxylic acid. Last question we can see. If you have CS3 singly bonded with carbon, which has a CS3 group attached here, which has a double bond with CH2. The same reagents came in a four, presence of heat and acid. Now again, you tell me. The first carbon and the second carbon. So the first carbon has how many hydrogens? Zero. So it will convert into? Ketone. CS3, single bond carbon, double bond O, and then there will be CS3. Plus that CS2 will convert into? Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, easy. Okay, any problem guys? Any problem no. till here? No, sir. Next reaction is the ozonolysis reaction. Okay. Ozonolysis reaction. So when alkenes are treated with ozone. They form ozonide and on further hydrolysis and on further hydrolysis in presence of zinc forms presence of zinc forms aldehyde or ketones, aldehydes and or ketones depending on on the alkene, depending on the alkene. So if I start with simple reaction, generalize this case with C double bond C, there will be two groups attached to the carbon atoms. And I'm going to react this with O3. Then the double bond will break, but these two bonds are going to be same. The, both the double bond is going to break, but the single bonds of carbon that will be 
intact and you will have ozone added to the carbon atoms like this. So three oxygen, you have to make a home with three oxygens and two carbon, right? Next you have zinc and water. Now in the presence of zinc and water, there is a cleavage of bonds like this. And you form C double bond O with the groups attached to it, whatever group was attached. And here also you are going to get O C double bond and the groups attached to it. So basically what is happening that you are breaking this bond, right? And you're putting oxygen here and putting oxygen here. That means you break carbon, oxygen, oxygen and carbon like this. So these are the product that we are going to get. Okay, these are the product that you are going to get. Let me give you an example that will serve your case paper. If you have CH2, double bond, CH2. And I am treating this with the first step, first step with O3, that is ozone. The first step we have O3. Second step we have zinc in the presence of water. Then we will break this bond like this. So you'll get carbon, CH2, and there will be double bond here. And plus you will get oxygen with a double bond, carbon and CH2. So if you look at this structure, it is methanol, right? Yes or no? It is an aldehyde, right? Yes or no? Can you see the product? Yes. Tell me. Okay, you just have to add oxygen like this. Just look at another example. If you have CS3, CH, double bond O, sorry, double bond CH2. Then in the presence of O3, the first step. Second step, we have zinc in the presence of water. We are going to break this bond, put oxygen here and put oxygen here. So we get CS3, single bond carbon, hydrogen intact like this, a double bond O plus you will get oxygen with a double bond carbon and there are two hydrogens attached to the carbon atom. Any problem? Any problem guys? Yes, sir. No, no. Next is if you have CS3 single bond carbon with CS3 atom here, double bond CS2. Then you're going to get O3, second is zinc in the presence of H2O. So you'll break it like this, oxygen and oxygen, CS3, carbon, single bond CS3, and double bond O. So this is ketone, plus you're going to get oxygen, carbon, and there are two hydrogens. This is the methane, okay, this is methane. Can I move yes or no? Please tell me. Yes. Okay. Now, next we have one more reaction left. That is, that will be your homework. You have to do it on your own. We'll just look at your DNC polymerization. You have alkene and the reagents they are not being given any kind of reagents for you guys as of now just high temperature and pressure with suitable reagent so you will write about polymerization okay so leaving a space this is all about alkynes this is all about alkynes now for alkynes i'm going to give you homework for alkynes i'm going to give you homework chemical properties this will be homework Write the major product. Or following. I'm going to use only one reactant that I will treat with different reagents. Okay, CH2. I'm going to treat this with first of all.
with BR, simple as BR. Secondly, I will be going to treat this with HBR in the presence of peroxide. Okay, HBR in the presence of peroxide. Next, I'm going to treat this with H2O in the presence of H plus. H2O in the presence of H plus. Next reaction I'm going to give you is KMNO4. And of course, at zero degrees Celsius, at zero degrees Celsius. Next is KMNO4, acidic with some heat. And the last one is in the first step we do O3. Second step we are going to give zinc, the presence of zinc and water. So write this, you have only one reactant, but there will be different types of product formed, right? So write this down. Done, all of you, please tell me if you're done writing. Yes, sir. What about others? Done? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So polymerization, polymerization you have to write, and then you have to also write these reactions. Okay, these reactions. Okay. Uh, let me see. The preparation of alkenes. Achha, we did alcoholic coverage, na? Okay, fine. That was I was. I was wondering about alcoholic coverage. Okay, fine. Next is alkynes. Again, these are also unsaturated hydrocarbons. Unsaturated hydrocarbons with at least one triple bond. With at least one triple bond. Yeah. The general formula is what? What is the general formula for these? What is the general formula again? Pn, H, 2n minus 2, H, 2n minus 2. And the smallest member is the first member, that is ethine, that is CH with the triple bond and CH group. CH and CH, triple bond CH. Okay. Next, uh, let us revise isomerism and nomenclature in one go only. So, I'll give you a question. What is the formula? What is the molecular formula of the fifth member 
ऑफ एल्काइन फिफ्थ नंबर ऑफ एल्काइन है ना फिफ्थ नंबर ऑफ एल्काइन एंड नेक्स्ट इज ड्रो एंड नेम ऑल द आइसोमर्स of that alkyne okay draw and name all the isomers of that alkyne so first of all you will tell me what will be the formula for the fifth member you understand the question yes or no ye bataiye pehle You understand the question? Sorry, how much? Samira. Five H eight. Ah, cha. What is the first member then, Samira? What is going to be the first member of alkene? First member of alkene has how many carbons? One. One. One carbon. Me, three bond. How will you make it, Samira? So that is not Samira. Yes, sir. Let us write the first structure, है ना? Let us write the first structure. CH three, CH two, CH two, CH two. So one, two, three, four. Carbon with a triple bond, CH. Now this will be six carbon atoms. That is why it's hex one ion. Now I can shift the triple bonds. So I can write CH three, single bond CH two. Single bond CH two, single bond C with a triple bond C, and there will be CH three like this, right? So this will be hex two I. Okay. Now I can shift one more CH three, single bond CH two, single bond carbon with a triple bond carbon, and then you have CH two, and then you have CH three. This will be hex one two three one two three yeah three I. All of these are position isomers because we are not changing anything. We are just changing the position of the triple bond. Next, what we can do? We can uh, decrease the number of carbon atoms. We can add some carbon atoms. We can decrease the number of chain. Now, chain isomers we can draw. So we'll have CS three. So let me put carbon and the CS three group here. So this will have CH, the single bond. One to three carbons are counted. Then you will have CH two. And then you have C triple bond, CH. This will be one, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Right? There are six carbon atoms. Count the hydrogens. Hydrogens will be three, three, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay. So what will be the name of the structure? Structure will be having one carbon, two carbon, three carbon, four carbon, five carbons. So this is my parent. This is my substituent. Right? So this substituent will be one, two, three. Four and five, because we start numbering from functional group. If functional group is present, then if not, then we start from double bond. If double bond is not present, then we start from the triple bond. So this will be having four methyl. In the fourth place, we have methyl group attached. Four methyl. One, two, three, four, five. Pent. One. Ion. Now I can shift the triple bond once more, so I can have CS three. CH with the CS3 group attached, carbon with a triple bond, carbon, and there will be CS3. Now this will be same thing. That is, yeah, four four methyl, four methyl, one, two, three, four, five. So this will be four methyl, pent, two ion, four methyl, pent, two ion. Okay. 
so there are one two three four five five i have drawn there are two more two more isomers that you have to draw and name it will that be fine yes or no please tell me if you have difficulty then refer to ncert you know you will have to find this question in ncert it is as an example okay it is as an example in your hydrocarbons chapter if you have difficulty in naming the isomers or finding the isomers then you will refer to ncert will that be fine yes or no please tell me yes sir. now methods of preparation preparation of alkanes of alkanes now in preparation of alkanes we have two methods in the first method we can just prepare ethane now uh, ethane is prepared from calcium carbide you have only one method that is you have two method in the first method we can only prepare ethane is from calcium carbide so calcium carbide is not easily available we source it from calcium carbonate CaCO3, and we know that if we heat CaCO3, it will dissociate into carbon, sorry, calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Now, when you treat calcium oxide CaO with pure carbon as charcoal or graphite, then the oxygen gets replaced, and you get calcium, and see that this is carbide plus carbon monoxide. Now, this calcium carbide. This is my calcium. Carbide. So C A has two positive charge and both the carbon has one one negative charge. So here you have calcium carbide. And if you just react this with H two O, require two moles of H two O, you are going to get C A O H whole twice plus C two H two. That is. Ethane, C two H two that is ethane. So you can understand the reaction like this: you have calcium and you have C two, right? And there is water and there is also water. So the OH bonds with calcium and the hydrogen they bonds with they bind with the carbide that is present in calcium carbide. Okay. So you get ethane. You get ethane. So calcium carbide, you will only get ethane, no other carbon atoms. Next is from vicinal dihalide. From vicinal dihalide. So we have seen vicinal dihalide. Second preparation from vicinal dihalides. Now, if vicinal dihalide, we start with. Simple molecules that has two halogen atoms attached to adjacent carbon, CH three, CH, CH two. Here we have Br, and here also we have Br. In the first step we react this with alcoholic KOH. So alcoholic KOH, when it is reacted with alkyl halide, what will happen? It will leave the Br. It will remove the Br and one of the alpha hydrogens like this. So this HBr will be removed, and you will be getting a double bond. We have seen this reaction when we were, uh, when we were doing the preparation of alkenes. When we were doing the preparation of alkenes, so you get C double bond, CH two, and here you have a Br atom attached. Now we react this with a good base that is NaNH two. NaNH two. Now, in this, the nitrogen atom it abstract one of the hydrogen, and the sodium atom it abstract the bromine. So you get CS three single bond carbon with a triple bond CH plus the sodium atom gets the Br and the NH two gets the hydrogen and it forms ammonia and it forms ammonia. Okay, so it doesn't matter what type of vicinal dihalide you have, you will remove the bromines and remove the hydrogens to form alkenes alkynes. So if you get something like this. Br and Br, and you are getting two-step 
The first step is alcoholic KOH. Second step is NaNH2. Then you have CS3, single bond, C triple bond, C, single bond, CS3. Okay. It doesn't matter what type of bonds you have. Uh, but please remember as a cyclic structure nahi banta hai, na? you will not get cyclic alkenes cyclic alkenes is not possible uh, let us say you have cyclic cyclic alkenes can, can be possible but it is like very unstable it will decompose cs3 ch2 carbon with a br and hydrogen, then with a carbon, hydrogen with a Br like this, CH2, CS3. Then alcoholic QH and NaNH2, we are going to get CS3, CH2, single bond C, triple bond C, single bond CS3. So wherever you have the uh, bromines or the chlorines or any of the halogen atom, you just remove them and then you form a triple bond there and you form a triple bond there. Is this fine, everyone? Yes or no? Easy, right? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. okay. So there are no other methods of preparation of uh, Alkynes that you have to have. Next is the physical properties. Okay, so physical property, which is also very similar to that of alkanes and alkynes, alkanes and alkenes. Physical properties. Now, so generally they are uh, the smaller alkynes. They are gases like. First three members are gases. Next, you have to eight members, they are liquid. And after eight members, they are going to be solid. So if I talk about the boiling point and melting point, then both of them, I can say boiling point and melting point increases with increase in carbon atoms. As we increase the number of carbon atoms. Next is boiling point and melting point. It will decrease with increase in branching as we have seen for alkenes and alkynes also branching. Okay. Also, since alkenes these are alkenes, this will be uh, non-polar since sorry, alkynes are non-polar. They are not soluble in water but dissolve in organic solvents so organic solvents these are non polar solvents organic solvents such as hexane octane Benzene, etc. Okay, so these are the physical properties. Next is chemical properties, and chemical properties, the first property is important that is the <clears throat> acidic nature of alkenes. What's this? Acidic nature of acidic nature of alkenes. Acidic nature. Now, let us look at the let us look at the <coughs> alkyne that is CS three single bond carbon with a triple bond CH. When I react this with a good base, for example, sodium NaNH two, then what happens this NH2 it reacts with this hydrogen and it forms CS3 CS3 single bond C the triple bond C negative Na positive 
and ammonia is released ammonia is released okay now let us look at what what is happening here let us look at what is happening here so whenever we are talking about the acidic nature whenever we are talking about the acidic nature we have to look at two things first thing is that whenever you are looking at acidic character acidic strength or acidic character it will be inversely proportional to the so what i can say the ch bond if it is weak if the ch bond is weak then it is going to form then it is going to form easily the c negative part right it is going to easily dissociate so let me just select this part and show you guys how is this ch bond here so the ch bond is like this and we know that this carbon is going to be sp hybridized this carbon is also sp hybridized and all of you know that sp hybridized carbon those carbons are more electronegative why because when you have more s character if you have more s character then those electrons the bonded electron they are more nearer to the carbon nucleus and if the electrons are nearer to the nucleus the nucleus can easily attract them and if it can easily attract them that means it has higher electronegativity so since it has higher electronegativity that means this will have delta negative and this will have delta positive now if the polarity of the bond that means if the carbon if the ch bond in that the hydrogen has a high hydrogen it has a very high positive charge that means it will be easier for it to liberate and it gets converted into h positive and the c can easily get converted into c negative that means acidic character will be directly dependent on the bond polarity the ch bond polarity if it is more polar that means the hydrogen can easily uh, easily depart from the carbon atom also it is directly proportional to the stability of stability of conjugate base if this conjugate base is stable that means it can easily be in ch3c c negative part and in this case we can see both of the uh, both of the factors favoring acidic character of alkynes why why are alkynes why are why is the ch bond in alkynes they are acidic the first reason is that since the carbon in alkynes are sp hybridized sp hybridized they are more electronegative and the ch bond is highly polar which makes the hydrogen acidic next point the conjugate base formed has negative charge on sp hybridized carbon atom and since sp hybridized carbon sp hybridized carbon is more electronegative is more electronegative it can easily bear a negative charge it can easily bear a negative charge okay are these point clear whenever if you will be asked what are the reason that the alkynes these are acidic then these are the two reasons that you are going to write these are the two reasons you are going to write fine all of you yes or no yes or no guys tell me yes sir okay <clears throat> now we have to compare the acid strength 
some pair the acidic strength in following now when we are going to compare the acidic strength in this in alkene alkyne alkene alkene and alkynes so we know that ch triple bond ch now all the acidic character is due to the hybridization so this is sp hybridized this is sp hybridized next is alkenes ch2 double bond ch2 so these alkenes will be sp2 and sp2 and then you have ch3 single bond ch3 these carbons will be sp3 and sp3 so obviously the carbon which is more electronegative will be more acidic in nature because it can be a negative charge and it can easily lose the hydrogen so the order will be like this we have alkynes which are most acidic followed by alkenes followed by alkenes b part if i compare in if i compare in alkynes we have three different types of alkynes the alkynes in which both the carbon have hydrogen and the alkyne in which one of the carbon has hydrogen and the alkynes in which we have no carbon attached to the triple bond so obviously the one in which we have two different carbon atoms both are sp hybridized and both of them have hydrogen that is going to be more acidic now if i look at this carbon atom then the ch3 group which is attached here it is plus i that means electron donating so when we make the conjugate base it will have a negative charge and if i add a electron donating group in that negative charge then we are donating electrons that is negatively charged so it will be increasing the negative charge if it is increasing the negative charge it will be making it unstable so obviously it is going to be less acidic than the chcs that is ethane and if i talk about those alkynes in which we have no carbon no hydrogen attached to triply bonded carbons then it will be very less acidic will be very less acidic okay so this is going to be the order now one point is to make it clear you have to note this that only the hydrogen bonded to only the hydrogen bonded to triply bonded carbon atom or acidic okay so these carbon these hydrogens these are not acidic okay these hydrogens are not acidic okay is it clear yes or no please tell me any problem till here yes sir no okay next is addition reactions of one thing now in addition reaction we will look at four different type of reaction so addition reaction it happens due to it alkynes can show addition reaction due to the presence of two pi bonds and an addition reaction can take place over the pi bond so the first reaction is addition of h2 now addition of h2 we have also seen addition reaction in alkene properties we're going to be very similar okay very similar we have ch3 single bond c with a triple bond ch you can add h2 you can add h2 the presence of pp pd or nickel you know as in alkenes then you will add one hydrogen on this carbon one hydrogen on that carbon so you will have ch3 carbon with one hydrogen with a double bond now and carbon this will have two hydrogens now you can again add hydrogen because we again have h2 in the presence of pt pd or nickel so you will be getting ch3 ch2 single bond ch3 
So if you add only one mole of hydrogen, you are going to get alkene. If there are two moles of hydrogen, then you are going to get alkene. Or if you have excess of hydrogen, or you have excess of hydrogen. Also, you can write CH, triple bond CH. And if you are given like this, two moles of H2 in the presence of nickel, okay, then you are going to just write CS3 and CS3. Okay, two moles of hydrogen, two hydrogen on this carbon, two hydrogen on that carbon are going to add, and you are going to get alkene. Now, if you're if you there have uh, they specifically mentioned like this CH triple bond CH plus one H2, then you are going to write it CH2 double bond CH2. But if they don't mention anything, CH triple bond CH, and they just write H2 in the presence of let us say PD, then how will you write? You will write this reaction CH2 double bond CH2. Then again, you will write that it will react, it can again react with H2 in the presence of PD, and then it can form CS3 CS3. So if they specifically give you the number of moles of hydrogen, then you are going to make a specific product. If two hydrogens, then alkene. If one hydrogen, then if one mole of hydrogen, that means alkene. But if they don't specifically give you the number of moles of hydrogen, then you are going to first of all make alkene, then add hydrogen once more, and then show that it can also form alkene. Is that clear, yes or no? Is that clear? Yes. Next is the addition of Br2. We have seen addition of Br2 also in alkenes, similar type, you know, similar addition of halogens. Addition of halogens. CH, triple bond CH plus Br2, which is first going to give me CH double bond CH with both the carbon will have Br, Br. Okay. Then again, if you have more Br, then you can form C single bond C. There will be CH and CH, Br, 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 and Br. So two moles of Br can add on alkenes to form tetra. Uh, this is how much? Yeah. Tetrahaloalkenes, right? Tetrahaloalkenes. That means you will have four halogen atoms in the alkene. Four halogen atoms in the alkene. Now, if you remember, this Br2 is of brown color. Yes or no? In the alkenes, I hope you remember. Vicinal dihalide. You see, Br2 is of brown color. Reaction with Br2 is used for the detection of multiple bond. You remember this? Yes or no? Yes. So it is also multiple bond means alkenes also and alkynes also. So this is brown color used for detection of multiple bond. For detection of multiple bonds. Next is the add addition of hydrogen halides, HX. Hydrogen halides. Okay. Now, in hydrogen halide, it will follow the Markovnikov rule. It follows because you will have. Just like this CS3, single bond carbon, triple bond CH. If I react this with HX, then first of all, it is going to CS3, single bond carbon. And then in this, the negative part will attach on that carbon atom, which has less number of hydrogen. So it will have X here, double bond CH2. Then again, you react this with HX. So again, it will follow the Markovnikov rule. The negative part, it will attach on that carbon atom, which has less number of hydrogen. So X, and here also X, and you will get CH3. Is that clear? Yes or no? Please tell me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Follows. Marconikos. Two. Negative part. 
on carbon with less hydrogens carbon with less hydrogen okay the mm -hmm. hydrogen halide is important but the most important one is the addition of water and we are going to learn a new thing here the fourth is addition of addition of water one thing that is similar to the hydrogen halide so in hydrogen halides we saw in hydrogen halides we saw that it is going to add on that carbon which has less number of hydrogens so in addition of water also the negative part will attach on that carbon which has less number of hydrogen so we have let us say cs3 single bond carbon triple bond ch plus hoh that is water now this reaction is done in the presence of hg2 plus and some acid and some acid okay so in alkenes also we saw that it is done in the presence of it is done in the presence of some uh, acid so it is done here in the presence of mercuric sulfate and uh, some h plus with a bit of heat okay not very much but a bit of heat so what is going to happen we have a uh, tell me first carbon or second carbon oh will attach on which carbon which carbon tell me less number oh. of hydrogen na first carbon I want all of you to focus here. Okay, so this is my product that I have got. Let me just get this a bit small. Okay. Now, so I want your focus on this oxygen, which has lone pair of electrons, which has lone pair of electrons. We have A double bond B, single bond C, and C has a lone pair. So there can be resonance like this. And you are going to get CS3, single bond carbon, double bond oxygen with the hydrogen attached like this. This will get a positive charge and you will get CH2 negative. Is that clear? Yes or no? Yes or no? Resonance? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, if you look at this hydrogen atom, this hydrogen atom, it is attached on oxygen. This oxygen is electronegative. It will be pulling electrons from the hydrogen. Now, this oxygen got positive charge, so it, is, it will be pulling electrons more. It will be pulling more and more electrons from hydrogen atom. So, this hydrogen is going to be very electron deficient. And since this hydrogen is also in the vicinity of, that is in the neighborhood of the C negative, the C negative can easily attack on this hydrogen right from electron source this is electron poor this carbon is electron rich this carbon is electron rich and then it is going to form now this happens so rapidly that we don't even see that resonating cell cell we directly see a product that is formed and if you look at the product it will be cs3 with a single bond carbon double bond oxygen so the hydrogen has shifted to this carbon atom okay this carbon atom now both of these are in a type of equilibrium this is a ketone and since it has a double bond we say that it is en and then we have a hydroxyl group so ol so this is enol form and this is the keto form this is enol form and this is the keto form now both of these are present but you will be writing the ketone form here because ketone form is predominant in the equilibrium it is predominant in the equilibrium because it is more stable predominant in the equilibrium is that fine yes or no please tell me yes sir you understand this resonance and then how the ketone is formed yes. ah, guys please look at it yes sir no now, just for the making of product, the carbon with less number of hydrogens forms PO. 
if you have let us see if you have something like this then any one of the carbon atoms is going to get the C double bond O. So first of all, it will form CH, OH double bond, CH2, then it is going to form C double bond O, hydrogen, and then there will be CS3, okay, CS3. So these now, enol and keto, these are known as, this is known as tautomerism. Tautomerism, okay. So this is keto in all tautomerism. Okay, any doubt till here, guys? Please tell me. In this addition of water. Yes, any doubt? No, sir. No, no. Okay, so that is it for you guys. Next you have polymerization in alkynes also. Polymerization in alkynes also. That is also you are going to write from NCERT. Okay, let me see. Let us do this question. Okay. So we have propanol and pentane 3 on. Are ozonolysis product, product of an alkene? So we have alkene. We react this with O3. And in the second step, zinc and H2O. We are getting propanol. Propanol means we have three carbons CS3, CH2, C, double bond O. Let me write double bond O like this. C, double bond O, and then there is hydrogen. And we have pentane 3 ohm. We have pentane 3 ohm. That means we have double bond O. This is carbon. And this carbon, it is pentane 3 ohm. So it has two different carbons attached to it. CH2, CS3. CH2, CH3, right? So this is pentane 3 ohm and this is propanol, correct? This is the question, no? Yes or no? Tell me, we have written the question right now, correct? Read the question and see, no? Read the question and see the reaction. This is propanol. And this is pentane 3 ohm. Uh, question mark nahi hai, okay? This is not a question mark. This is a full stop. This should be a full stop. Just uh, consider this as a printing mistake in NCERT. Yes, Ari, do you have any problem in seeing this reaction? Yes or no, please, please tell me that. No, sir. no, no, this is what given in the question. So first thing is that if you get this type of question, you will have to make a reaction like this. Okay, make a reaction like this. Now, important point is that you should place this oxygen facing each other. So when you have to prepare alkene, you just take this take this OO out and you will get CS3, 
CH2, and then you have CH double bond with this carbon, and this carbon has CH2 and CH3 group attached. And here also you have CH2 and CH3 group attached. So this is how you're going to form the alkene. Is that clear, yes or no? Tell me. Yes, sir. Yes, no? Okay, fine. So you write this. Let me know if you're done. Done. So that's it for today, Hannah. And tomorrow we will start benzene, that one hour lecture. And then on Wednesday, we will complete this chapter. Okay. Wednesday, we will complete this chapter. Uh, your exam, when is your exam?